Hello, what's up everybody? We got this uh, pretty large uh, plasma TV. No, no, nothing to stand on. It just got these uh, wall mounts. And it got some uh, damages on the, you see on the corners here. It's best to tear it down and uh, see how it looks like. Now I tilted it down the whole TV. So you can see some damages here, this part here, and this TV is pretty heavy. I'm gonna put it on some scales and see how much it weighs. I first need to remove the back plate, because otherwise I can't even get a good grip on it. Now I have these brackets here to can have a good grip on. Let's put it on the scales and see how much it weighs. So let's have a look. Put this TV on first. 31, 31 kilograms, 31.5 nearly. Yes, let's put the back plate on it. 5.6. We've got nearly 40 kilograms of TV. So let's have some close ups. Here we got uh, the Y sustain and the Y sustain buffer board. With the main power supply, we've got a main board under here, we've got the Z sustain here. Have a closer look, and we've got a whole row of a long buffer board all the way here. So, a lot of screws later, we had to remove these brackets. They're pretty heavy. Look at the screw tap here. Must hold the whole uh, TV bait. A bit more wire around it. Yes, here we go. Have a look underneath here. Got some uh, power supplies. Have a closer look. We got something that looks like a power supply here. The two screws holding it in. Yes, it's a small uh, power supply. So this thing looks like the standby power supply. So maybe it's this one which is faulty. We will see in a minute. We got this connection here, which is connected to the main board, and it turns this relay on and off, so we can get power to the main power supply. So if you look here at the main power supply, we got this uh, cable that was connected to this uh, small power supply here. We got this wire here that comes from the main power terminal, it goes into this, and uh, to the relay, and goes back to the power supply here. So now I got this little power supply here, and I'm going to measure some voltages and see if it's faulty. And yes, not so much happens. So I'll flip it upside down. Let's see what we got on the connector. Yes, we got five volts here. So if I put a little resistor here, the relay should click. It works. It works. So let's see if we got any voltage out. Yes, we got voltage out. So this circuit works with no problems. So let's tear the rest of the TV apart. So here we go. This is the terminal there for video input. These are the cards you can put here. Let's see encrypted the channels. Piece of metal. And under here we should got the Z sustain board. And now the screws are removed. And here we got the Z sustain board. Pretty nice heatsink actually. Got this uh, chip underneath it. Here we've got the main board. Uh, 
uh, there's the push buttons and some uh, sensors for the remote. Pretty nicely cased with important components inside this. That was just a lot of effort to remove the main board, but here it is. Fortunately, we got some connectors here, but the rest of the wires just went inside this box. Got all kinds of uh, interfaces, and uh, all of this goes into this wire here, which is the main display output, which goes to this the control board here. And this control board goes to the wire sustain, the buffer board, and the Z sustain. You got this main power supply here, feeds power into the sustain boards. You got the silver wire here that feeds this uh, main processing board. And that puts signal into the sustain board here, and signal to the here, and we got some signal to the buffer boards. So here we can see a close up, you can see the ships here. With a bunch of ships here on all the outputs and these are octal bus buffer three state output non-inverted so they buffer up the signal from the main processor here you can drive these uh, different steps so now i'm going to remove all the circuit boards so power supply Pretty massive beast. We have close ups later. Let's have a quick look on the Z sustain board. We've got this little wire here that feeds power to the buffer board. And these things here, these are just a single trace. Look at that. This is a single trace of uh, wire going into the display. So let's pick it up. Look at all these dots here. These are bonding this big trace here. This trace on the back here, look at that. And here we've got the voice sustain. And if you zoom in a bit, here's the signal coming in. And here we actually got two 74 series X buffer. So as I want to remove this, I want to show you this thing here. Got a power wire here going into this uh, buffer board for the uh, wire sustain. We've got these special uh, connectors here. Uh, sorry, this little wire here wasn't a power wire, it was just a signal wire. We've got this chip here that controls the signal from this. And we've got even more chips here. Yes, this was actually a signal wire, not a power wire. So, yes, a lot of screws later. I can remove this uh, complete circuit board. Why is the same board? Yes, these were single wire connections. So pretty fat connections there. You can see underneath it. So a lot of power is supposed to go through that. And you see with this large heat sink with a chip underneath it. And here we got the pretty interesting part. Here's where the magic happens. We got like 200 volts coming in from these terminals here. And these are pretty small ships, a lot of legs around them. So yes, they have put some uh, special silicon or something around the legs from t keeping them from like arcing together. So yes, now the device sustain buffer boards are removed. Let's remove this main part, which controls everything. Is stuck. Yes, here we go. As you can see here, large cooling pad. It's supposed to take all the heat away from the chip, but even a little heat sink on top. And now we can remove these buffer boards under here. 
So yes, here we go. Our heat sinks are taken off. And here you can see the buffer boards. And look at that, this is quite nice. You got these small chips here on the ribbon cable. Now we can remove this. There are not so many components on these boards. The main part is on the ribbon cable. So yes, now we, now we are kind of done here. There's nothing left on the TV, but we still need to get the display out. So we got a big aluminium sheet in the middle and we got some aluminium frame that holds everything together. There are no screws left, so I think it's just to pick it up. So yes, there we got it. It's an amazing piece of engineering right there. It's not so many screws actually holding the whole thing together. I hope I can use this uh, big glass sheet for something. Maybe a infinity mirror. That would be nice. Make an infinity mirror out of this. I have a mirror which is pretty similar size of this one, so why not? Looks like an LG. LG display in a Thomson TV. And now let's have a close-up on the circuit boards. And here we got the large pile of circuit boards. So Plasma TV has got a lot of circuit boards with a lot of useful components. Here we got the main power supply. The power comes in here through common mode chokes, filters into this rectifier here, into a switch, switch switching transistors. And into these transformers here. And these give out the main voltages like VS, VA and some lower voltages for the control board and the main board. So here we got the main voltages this power supply gives. We got the, we got the 5 volts and 55 is 265 which is the VA. And this 175 to 200 VS. You always have to check these uh, two voltages to make sure they are correct. Because often these two voltages are the main cause for a plasma TV to fail. Obviously in this case these two were okay. And here we got the Z sustain board. I don't think that there's anything wrong with these circuit boards actually. I think the main fault was in the main board. This power in here. So it's got these uh, high voltage capacitors. Those moving capacitors here. A little power supply for the buffer board. Here we've got the Y sustain board. With a lot of power components on this one. A bunch of MOSFETs. There's some SMD MOSFETs here, got a huge chip underneath this heatsink, some high voltage capacitors, and on the signal input here, we got two 7400 series buffers. And all of that goes into these three terminals, that goes into the buffer boards, plus the little signal connection here. To actually change these chips underneath this, you need to actually first desolder them and afterwards you can remove these heat sinks away from that. The chip is actually screwed into this heat sink before it's soldered on the circuit board. And here are the row driver boards or the buffer on the Y sustain. And got these like a bus bar looking things that connects to the sustain board. And the signal comes in here. And you've got all these chips here that controls the rows on the TV. And we've got this uh, like silicon looking thing around this to protect it from dust and moisture and prevent eventual uh, flashovers. And here are the column driver boards or the buffer boards. 
there are not so many stuff on these boards. The main processing happens on the actual uh, flex wire that connects it, connects here. So that means if there's any chip wrong with with this uh, column driver, the the whole screen must actually be changed. And here's the little circuit board for the encrypted channels. I got the uh, main IC name here, and we got some memories here, and another logic controller there. Regulators, not so much a USB connector. And here we got the main board. There was a normal analog uh, tuner. We got this analog board here that controls uh, the SCART. And on this other side, we got this rather interesting connector here. I think it's a service port. So here are some chip numbers on this analog board, if you are interested in that. Here's some kind of analog to di digital converter. This thing here, or this, and this uh, main processing unit. Got its own crystal. And here we've got the main uh, digital side of the board. With some analog inputs here as well. There's some analog digital converters here. If you zoom in a bit, we can see we've got some uh, IC circuits. With like a RAM memory here for this like video controlling thing here. The P Pixelworks the PV2300. So the video controller or something. With another circuit here. Don't know what that does. They're all in these uh, VGA chips. And here we've got the main video and uh, audio processing unit. So Pixelworks PV 11.8b with its own uh, like flash memory here. We've got two RAM on top and a little crystal. Here's a silicon image chip that controls the HDMI connector. So here's the main display controlling thing. It's a dual LVDS transmitter between the host and the flat panel display it's with a QXGA resolution and this transmitter converts uh, 48 bits and it's like 24 bit color dual pixel of uh, TTL or CMOS data. So this is a pretty interesting chip. It's a EP387A. Let's take the signal from the main processing unit here into this uh, wire here that was connected to the logic control board and here we've got the logic control board that controls all the sustain boards and the buffer so we've got a big bunch of uh, amplifiers or bu <laughs> buffers here and over here and over here that goes to the sustain boards and we've got this uh, large chip in the middle that I don't know what it is because I have put this heatsink on it and a lot of uh, like silicon looking thing around to keep it in but it got its its own uh, like flash memory here or ram this pads on the back it's cooling pads here so this takes in the signal here from the main board and converts it into a logic signal to the sustain boards to show the picture so oh, yes, conclusions, in a uh, plasma TV there are a lot of circuit boards, a lot of different uh, signal processing units, so there's a pretty big chance that something can fail in this. There's a bunch of circuit boards and it's a pretty complex system, and yes, there's a lot of technology to actually run a like a matrix display, which is a plasma TV is, there's a lot of power from this power supply. So yes, plasma TVs, they got a lot of uh, power components. So if you want uh, like uh, power components like uh, MOSFETs or transistors or heat sinks or anything like that, a plasma TV is a pretty good score to actually get. All power components are pretty many power components in this. So yes, thanks for watching.